Hello again, I'm Braddock Supervisor John Cook. Welcome back to Braddock Neighborhood News, the program I am using to provide you with information on issues facing our community and ideas on how we can strengthen our neighborhoods. During the month of September, we take time to recognize suicide awareness. This topic is a difficult one, but one that needs to be addressed. Joining me today are Belinda Busher and Jim Kelly from the Fairfax Falls Church Community Services Board. By the end of this show, we will be better aware of the warning signs shown by someone who may be contemplating suicide and have a better understanding of how to help them. Belinda, Jim, I uh, really appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's glad to be, I'm glad to be here. Now, you both work for what we call the CSB, Community Services Board, and that's uh, a county agency that uh, actually a state agency combination. And you have a big portfolio, mental illness, uh, intellectual disabilities, substance abuse. Um, you guys do a lot to help people in need. Tell us a little bit yes, about CSB and, and, and your specific jobs, Belinda. Well, we're a public agency that provides services for people specifically who need uh, mental health services, as you said, substance use disorder, intellectual disability, and youth who have serious emotional disturbances. We serve over 20,000 people a year, and uh, many of whom come to emergency services where, where Jim works. Um, and we also refer people. We provide an information and referral service. Not everyone in the community is going to be needing our services. We can refer them to other organizations in the community that um, also provide some of these services. And you have a number of uh, people who get services for a long period of time, certainly people with intellectual disabilities, but uh, Jim, when there's an emergency, uh, that comes into your department and people can call in 24 hours uh, a day uh, if there's correct. an emergency. Yeah, much like a hospital emergency room, we have staff that are on board 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, those staff are professionals who specialize in behavioral health crises. Uh, they're there to answer the phone so that if people call in with questions regarding a particular crisis or what people perceive as being a particular crisis, uh, to field those calls and to provide information in terms of whether or not they should come in, see someone privately, but to, certainly to offer direction so that the people's concerns and needs are taken care of. And I think that's uh, an important concept that someone may feel that they have an, uh, you know, an immediate need and maybe they do, maybe they don't. Yeah. And then there are those who have an immediate need, but they're not calling in. Well, and let's, well, let's say crises are self-defined so that there's, there should be no obstacle to anybody right. that is calling in for help. And there are folks that we would wish to call in that may not. And we uh, certainly programs like this will do outreach and advertise the fact that uh, we're promoting the idea of individuals calling in when they believe that there's problems uh, and that uh, mental health can help with those issues. And that's part of what uh, we want to talk about today is not only for people who may benefit from the services that CSB offers to call in, but for those around them who mm -hmm. say, you know, I have a friend or a family member or somebody, a neighbor, or somebody in the community, and, uh, and maybe they're not going to call in, but uh, you can be a good neighbor and help out and sometimes help the person make that step to get the help they need. That's right. And it's not unusual for neighbors to, to call in regarding neighbors and what's happening in the community. Uh, we have the police department that's also our kind of eyes and ears in the community. Uh, our police department is trained in doing crisis intervention. And so they recognize mental health, substance abuse, intellectual dis disability kind of issues in the community. Uh, many times they're bringing in folks that uh, have announced or in some manner uh, given some alert to somebody in the community that they may be at risk and will bring them in and or ask us to come out. We have what's called a mobile crisis team that responds as part of the emergency services and will respond to the community by going out to wherever the police may be uh, and meet with the individual on scene. One of the um, messages you know we really need to get out to people is that you know, mental health uh, issues cross all lines in the population, right? All economic lines, mm -hmm. all racial lines, ethnic lines. 
uh, too often <clears throat> somebody says, well, you know, that, that can't be me or that can't be or that's a problem somebody else has. But, um, Belinda, you really see in the CSB that uh, mental health issues and specifically we're talking, you know, in September about suicide awareness that that is not an issue confined to any particular demographic. That's so true. And I think people would be more aware of that if there weren't such a stigma attached to uh, mental illness. I think the more that we do to, like you're doing with this show, to inform people about resources and also about some of the kind of common signs of um, an emergent mental illness or concern, um, the better we'll be able to share the message that um, help is available, that recovery is possible, particularly if people can get help early. Um, there's an excellent chance of coming through the crisis and uh, continuing on with a fulfilling life. And it is important that the only way to talk about getting rid of the, rid of the stigma of mental illness is to talk about getting right. rid of the uh -huh. stigma of mental illness. And that is just so critical because you want to reach somebody before the crisis point. And, and the best way to do that is have people believe that there is help available and that it's okay to call. And for a neighbor or a friend or family member to say it's okay to call and to feel that, um, that there's support. Mm -hmm. And folks must recognize that it's, uh, you know, one in five people sometime in their lifetime is going to be reaching out for some assistance or there will be mental health issues within the family in which they'll be reaching out for assistance. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, uh, this is something that is inherent within all families and uh, we must be there to be able to support one another when, when in effect that need arises. The CSB is doing something else that um is, I think, very effective in stigma reduction and would be of potential interest to anybody watching this show. It's a, a wonderful mental health first aid training right. that we're offering throughout the community. <coughs> um, we've trained over a thousand people now in our community, um, including members of your staff, including uh, policymakers, uh, school teachers, uh, faith community members. Um, students and it's a, just a sim, an eight hour course um, very inexpensive it only costs twenty five dollars which basically covers the textbook and you learn during the course um, about some of the common uh, mental illnesses and behavioral health issues that occur what the common warning signs are and most importantly what you can do um, as a layperson to help somebody who might be in a, a crisis moment, just as you would learn in a Red Cross first aid class. Mm -hmm. You don't become a surgeon after taking that, um, but you do learn some very practical ways to help people. And that, that is, that's an excellent class and an excellent service, and certainly any, anybody who is, you know, regularly coming into contact with people who are experiencing mental illness, you know, ought to be thinking about uh, that class, um, as you said, you know, one of my staff members, you know, took the class, and and now the county's gone one step further. I think this is fascinating. We're going to be launching a one-hour online do-it-yourself course where um, you're not going to become an expert, but uh, you can learn, uh, you know, a fair amount about just enough to know what to look for. And that one-hour course is available now. And it's specifically about um, youth suicide prevention. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's really fun about it is, I mean, fun, um, it's set up like a, uh, kind of like a video game. In with that, an avatar. With right? an avatar, How right. Neat. Um, yes. And we actually have three modules of that. There's one um, that is focused on having conversations with high school age youth. One's focused on middle school. And then one is focused on youth who may be experiencing problems related to sexual identity. And each course takes an hour or less to do. Um, they're available from our website. They're free um, and, any, and available to anyone in the community. And we'd really encourage you know, anybody who is a coach of, a, of you know, recreational 
uh, league and even certainly the teachers are going to be, I believe, all receiving this training uh, starting this fall. Yes. Uh, anybody who is uh, in, in any regular contact with our youth, it might be sports teams, music groups, uh, teaching various types of classes, whatever, we want to encourage uh, you know, people to take this one hour class mm -hmm. to learn, um, again, to learn enough to know mm -hmm. what to look for. They're not going to become an expert like the people in your staff, Jim, but enough to maybe say, you know what, uh, I know just enough to know, I think I've got somebody that maybe has a problem and I can help. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to review some of that material and it gives very practical steps in terms of first listening for warning signs, uh, approaching, you want to approach the individual if you believe that there are warning signs and develop a little bit of a relationship, a rapport with, with that individual. Provide support, you know, ask pertinent questions in terms of what may be going on, and then knowing where to refer the individual so they can get assistance. And then following up with that individual to see that they've, you know, reached some place that they're safe. And that they've followed through. Right. Uh -huh. You know, you talk about the warning signs, um, and it, this just, if somebody breaks their leg, they say to you, I think I broke my leg, but mm -hmm. there's not too many people who are going to just step up necessarily and say, I've self-diagnosed myself with X condition and, and, you know, and, or even acknowledge that they're contemplating suicide. So right. what do we look for? The person on the street, the average viewer who's at home saying, what, what should I be looking for, whether it's in our youth or, or in our older citizens? And we'll talk a bit about mm -hmm. that later in the show. Well, first recognize that we're a very cultural, diverse community. And because of that, there's going to be particular cultural nuances that, that may vary for, for you know, different uh, individuals. Uh, but overall, in general, you'll see that people may be suffering you know, different levels of distress due to anxiety, depression, that in fact that people may be, be experiencing psychosis or some kind of a mania that in effect will affect their mood, will affect their judgment, it will affect their sleep cycle, which is very, very important, it will affect appetite. So, so, so uh, some of those things are, are the ground floor things that you begin to take a look at. Then you begin to take a look at things such as, is the individual isolating themselves to a point that in effect they rarely come out? You often see this with uh, school-aged children who will stay at home playing video games and become kind of uh, socially recluse. Uh, individuals that begin to talk about feeling helpless, hopeless, not wanting to go on, you know, loss of interest, again, loss of appetite. But those are just main daily functions that you'll see with an individual that are changing. Uh, family members certainly can recognize the majority of those things in the schools themselves. Those issues may not be as predominant to the teachers who may see that the student has written something that may catch their eye and the teacher would then want to follow up with that student, sit down, talk with them in terms of, you know, why is there such a interest in death and dying? And they, in that conversation, they may just find out that they've just recently lost an aunt and uncle or somebody that's important in their family. But again, they may also find in that conversation that the individual may be depressed and that they've had some thoughts of, of hurting themselves or doing something like that. You also see substance abuse throughout the ages uh, that in fact that that generally increases with, with individuals that may be uh, vulnerable to depression and feeling suicidal. Um, you know, another you thing to talk mm -hmm. about here along with the risk factors is protective factors. Mm -hmm. What are some things that the research seems to show, um, particularly with youth, um, but really all ages um, that uh, seem to have a kind of protective um, effect. We don't see, um, for instance, um, what, what we found in our county's youth survey is that um, youth who have a parent available to go to when they need help youth who have some adult in the community that they feel comfortable talking to, and also youth who um, get positive reinforcement from their teachers about work they have done. Those, those three factors seem to show up as something that we don't see as frequently in when we're surveying youth 
and get responses back from youth who say they, they have been thinking about suicide. Mm -hmm. So um, there are other factors that seem to be um, positives. That, and the more that no one, no single one is going to save the day, but children and youth and, and adults who have more of those protective factors um, seem to be less likely to contemplate suicide. So to kind of turn that around for the person who's watching who uh, themselves is not experiencing a mental health uh, issue, but who wants to be helpful to others, uh, certainly to parents, to your ability to communicate with your children, but even the coach, the mentor, yes. the tutor, the, the, the school teacher, the helper in the school, Sunday school teacher at church, um, if you uh, have an ability to connect with kids so that they feel safe talking to you, you're going to help sort of empower that child or that youth to resist the negative temptations that can head down in a bad place, mm -hmm. whether it's suicide or, or you know, bad depression or something like that. That's right. And this online training that you were discussing is very helpful in helping us kind of practice some of those difficult conversations. What is it that you can say that can actually open up the conversation and encourage the young person to say more? And what is it very in a very well-meaning way that we can say that shuts down the conversation? Yeah, and that's not always um, intuitive, right. you know, and some folks are better than others at, at this. And, and, you know, that, but I think the important message is that it's a place for everyone to start. Yes. And, and there are some people who just have a natural gift of being able to connect with people and then uh, others for whom it's a struggle and that's okay too. But if you're going to be involved with especially our youth, but also our seniors, and, and if you just want to be... Um, you know, able to help more. Really want to encourage people to take that, take that one hour class. They can find it on the website, the Community yes. Services Board. Yes. Um, and also, we've got information. Belinda, you've got a, um, you've got a, a poster that uh, people are, are, I think, beginning to see around that um, uh, advertises um, the phone number. And Jim, does it, that goes to your shop. No, this is, this is something this we're is doing. This is the crisis line this is, shop. Yes, this right. is something new. It's the phone number you see here is a text line. It's a suicide and crisis text line that's actually operated by one of our community partners, a, a nonprofit organization called Crisis Link in partnership with our community services mm -hmm. board. And Crisis Link, um, great organization, great nonprofit to be involved in. Um, has had a telephone line uh, for years where people can call uh, when they're feeling that maybe they are, are thinking about suicide and specifically for our youth to text because you know it took us a while as adults to figure out hey <laughs> if we want to reach kids how do they communicate right. they text and so there's I think great promise in this and so we want to this is the one time we want to encourage our kids to text right mm -hmm. is yes. to say you know, here's a way to, to reach out. Um, and it's a great when they initiative. do text here, um, if it's a, after <coughs> the initial triage, if it's an emergency, they work very closely right. with Jim's group. Crisis Link will call us and or ask the individual to call us and follow up. And then we may make some uh, additional outreach calls to the individual and see what we can do to help supplement services for them. And I think that, that message is that there's help available on a number of fronts. Oh, Crisis yeah. Link, has tr Link has trained volunteers, We've got the text line, the phone line. Your office has you know, professionals who, mm -hmm. who have the more detailed knowledge. And so people can reach out in a number of different ways if, if they're in need or if they know people in need. And, and importantly, you all talk. Mm -hmm. Crisis Link, CSB, Correct. we all talk together so that um, if it's not the right place, we'll, we'll get them to the person they need to talk to. Mm -hmm. Another important key partner here is our schools. And um, Fairfax County Public Schools is rolling out this crisis line um, for in all the high schools. Um, I know of one principal who has encouraged students to program 
this text number into their phones. Um, uh, Fairfax County Public Schools is also rolling out um, mental health first aid training for their staff and the one hour uh, online training that we described earlier. Yeah, I really, you know, I commend the school system for really jumping on this issue. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, we've talked about it. We've had you know, very unfortunate publicized incidents of, of, of students who have taken their lives and, and, and what that does to a community and our school system really has jumped out now in front on this, working with county staff, working with your office to provide these services. So that's, I think, a real positive for our youth. Um, and excited is the wrong word, but we're very, we're very pleased to see this kind of service, and I think it's going to do great thing for, things for our kids. We have also, we know that another group in our population that um, is uh, often um, or disproportionately maybe uh, affected in, in suicide is, is our older citizens. And uh, just as our youth who, you know, they haven't you know, fully pulled together everything that they need as far as dealing with all the emotions of life, uh, our older citizens have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. and at, at that end, um, and you see that uh, in the CSP Their, their struggles well. are certainly unique due to the fact that as we grow older, we begin to lose friends. Uh, uh, so our social support system that we were talking about earlier begins to kind of erode and you don't have those individuals around that you're accustomed to talking to or about. Yeah, also, through uh, aging, you have your decline in terms of your general health, uh, so that at that adds stress. So that there's, there's a combination of different factors that can uh, add those kind of stresses that may make individuals that are elderly a little bit higher at risk. And isolation, right? That's correct. Because uh -huh. some of our seniors, especially if they lose a spouse, they're living alone, right. they're in isolation, declining health, um, and something that are neighbors can watch out for is if you do have somebody on your street, right, a neighbor who um, used to be very active mm -hmm. and maybe they did lose a spouse, um, you haven't seen them out so much, uh, maybe that's a good time to knock on the door and, and see how they're doing. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, and w another segment of our population that really um, starting to look at and have a lot of concern about is our, our military mm -hmm. folks coming back from, certainly from overseas, right. uh, uh, significant issues with, mm -hmm. um, with depression, with uh, post-traumatic stress, and with suicide, and, and having come out of a, of a military culture where they've been taught and trained to be very self-reliant. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a struggle to convince them to reach out for help. That's, that's correct. And uh, uh, there are services through, through the VA for those individuals. Yes, the have... CSB is partnering, has for quite some time been um, a partner with the Virginia Wounded Warriors mm -hmm. uh, group. Um, we actually have helped uh, the Virginia Wounded Warriors program promote another online training called Family of Heroes. You, that's another free training you can access online and it's produced actually by the same company, Cognito, that developed our online suicide prevention training. Um, uh, so that's, that's available on mm -hmm. the web, familyofheroes.org. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, as I understand, we're also interacting with um, the Wounded Warriors program in a kind of outreach capacity to um, try to identify people who may need our services. Mm -hmm. We have a longstanding relationship with the Wounded Warriors program going back uh, many years. Uh, we've done training with them. Uh, we've taken a look at uh, issues specific to soldiers that are returning. Any soldiers who have uh, been in combat may have uh, disabilities uh, secondary to brain damage or, or things uh, that in effect that add those additional stressors to them. Uh, if they call our uh, emergency number at the uh, uh, at, at Woodburn Center that in fact uh, we will certainly bring them in do an evaluation we will do refers referrals to the wounded warrior program as they will do referrals to us so that we can look at and see how we can assist these individuals and another thing and I want to touch on and we're about out of time but in about uh -huh. 15 seconds um, 
you, you have walk-in services. You have an emergency center. That's correct. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. We actually have two centers. One is down at the Gartland Center, down in the Mount Vernon area, and that is open from 9 to 5. And then the Woodburn Center, again, is open 24-7, 365 days a year. And they're there for any self-defined crisis that someone may have. You can call and or you can walk into the, the clinic to be seen. Uh, again, we have professionals there that uh, uh, are well trained in terms of providing crisis intervention. We have psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, and each of these individuals work together as a team when somebody comes in to do an assessment to see what an individual's needs are and then to begin working with them. We may assist by medicating somebody, we may assist by uh, doing follow-up evaluations with them and or, pretend, or possibly hospitalization if needed. Right. And so the message is there's help available. Call, mm -hmm. text, walk in, talk to a neighbor and, uh, and be aware of our neighbors. Help somebody in need. I'd like to thank Belinda and Jim for joining me on today's show. Suicide is a serious issue that has affected many of us in a personal way. We have all heard about students, older adults and many others who have gone down this path. But with the tools and resources shared here today, hopefully we will be more aware and better able to pre prevent a future tragedy. I hope you've enjoyed this segment of Braddock Neighborhood News. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or other needs, please contact my office at 703-425-9300 or email braddock at fairfaxcounty.gov. Tune in next month for another edition and please remember to look for ways to volunteer. Your community needs you.